So, um, without further delay, it's uh, my pleasure to introduce the first of our three keynote speakers this morning, and uh, that is Peter Zaitsev. Peter is the CEO and co-founder of Percona. He managed the high performance group within MySQL until 2006 when he founded Percona. And Peter has a master's degree in computer science and is an expert in database kernels, computer hardware, and application scaling. Peter? Good luck. Hello. Thank you all for uh, being here. My talk is going to be about our ever-evolving uh, MySQL ecosystem. And before we go to that, I wanted to uh, kind of go back a little bit and uh, reiterate that that is a 10 years of the uh, MySQL conference. And I actually believe this conference was really a fundamental driver beyond MySQL ecosystem success. For now 10 years, it was bringing together both MySQL users as well as a lot of uh, vendors helping all of us to be more successful with MySQL. So that's the 10th year anniversary, and that's really great to be here. Now, when people talk about MySQL ecosystems, we often quote a lot of research from uh, 451 group, not athletes. They do a lot of wonderful research, for other sort of research and numbers. But I wouldn't be doing that because Matt Athlete himself we will be here on the conference, and he will talk about that on Thursday. Instead, I will share my first-hand experiences and observation as a member of MySQL ecosystems I've been for many years. So in this presentation, we look at our current state and the road ahead for uh, all of us. Now, I believe there's a lot of things which are going on in my school ecosystem. And for this short keynote, I had to focus. So I choose to focus on only on three things, which are MySQL work together with other technologies and spaces of NoSQL and big data, MySQL uh, in the cloud, and MySQL ecosystem transition to be a multi-vendor one. First, let's talk about MySQL, NoSQL, and the other technologies as they used uh, to give those days. If you guys remember a few years ago, when we spoke about web applications, there was a very popular open source stack, which a lot of applications use, right? Linux, Apache, MySQL, a number of uh, programming languages, which happened to all start with letter P. Now, situation has been changing, and it has been changing on all layers. We see the more variety being used on the uh, uh, web server software. We now see we're using a lot more systems to store and process data, and we also have more variety in the programming languages you used uh, to develop application. While only Linux stands a dominating component of our open source stack, but even though it uh, has a wide choice of different Linux distributions. So when previously we had just MySQL, we now use whole set of uh, uh, different technologies together. And I'm going to talk a little bit of ways we do that uh, together, but I also think what we are only in the start in, in the pathway, and over years to come, we'll see more technologies and approaches develops how we can use this wonderful uh, set of technologies better together. When we look at the framework support, we can see now technologies like Ruby on Rails, Hibernate, and Doctrine, which previously we were focused on MySQL, allow us to store data with a whole uh, different set of uh, NoSQL and uh, big data technologies. We also see a lot of support from analytics software, allowing us to use a wide range of technologies. And even more interesting, what we have a lot of technologies which allow us to process large data volumes with MySQL. We have technologies like Perelastic or Shard Query, which allow us to do massively parallel data processing in MySQL. We have storage engines like InfoBright and FinityDB, which are column-level storage engines, which are very efficient for storing and uh, processing well-structured data. They can be by far more efficient than many of the newer uh, technologies out there. And I also want to mention especially TokuDB, which provides their uh, storage engine with heavy compression and very high uh, insertion rate, which was just 
uh, made available yesterday as an open source. And I would like you to join me in the, giving them a round of applause for this wonderful contribution to MySQL ecosystem. <laughs> when it comes to server-side support, we have to know that MySQL is not really only SQL. Actually, the MySQL cluster had support for no SQL protocol even before this name was invented. A few years back, MySQL cluster also added support for memcache protocol. And now, with MySQL 5.6, uh, the server can speak uh, memcache protocol. If you look at MariaDB, it goes even further, adding the storage engine support for technologies such as uh, Cassandra and LevelDB. But I think the most important change which is happening here is the change in mindset. When we have a lot of engineers now thinking not only in terms of MySQL, but in terms of finding the best technologies which we can use to solve their problems they have in hand. And I think this is great. In my many years of practice, I've seen so many cases where MySQL wasn't used appropriately. It just wasn't the best solution, but it was still used because uh, we didn't have any other good open source technologies available. We can see example of this use of MySQL together in a lot of well-known uh, resources. We know Facebook, which uses MySQL, but they also use Hadoop, HBase, and Memcache. We know Twitter, which use MySQL, Hadoop, uh, and Cassandra. We know Craigslist, which use MySQL, Sphinx, and uh, uh, MongoDB. These are all very uh, bright uh, technologies, have a lot of good engineers finding the best solutions uh, they can use. Let me now talk briefly about MySQL in the cloud. And let me ask you, can you guys raise your hand who is running MySQL in the cloud here, at least one instance? Well, so we have a good, fair uh, amount of hand. And indeed, this is the uh, very important trend uh, which is happening right now. Now, when we look at the choices, how we can de deploy MySQL, we have generally with three main approaches those days, right? We can have our own data center or set of racks with our own servers. We can go to hosting provider and uh, uh, rent a few servers, or we can run our MySQL application in the cloud. Among all of those, the cloud allows us to approach the deployment the most agile and have the least upfront expenses and uh, expertise requirement, which is great for a lot of the new agile companies which are starting to use uh, with MySQL. When you come MySQL in the cloud, there are two choices, two ways we can run it. One is called infrastructure as a service. Think Amazon EC2, for example. Then we have uh, the infrastructure provided to us as an operating system, which we can run a variety of applications on. One of such applications can be MySQL, right, which you often do. Database as a service is a uh, different beast when we uh, have provided access to the database itself, as well as some some management tools. Both of those have certain benefits and drawbacks to them. When you look at the advantages of infrastructure as a server approach, you have a flexibility of being able to run any kind of MySQL uh, variant uh, and versions we like and set up in any way we like. It's also often more cost efficient and we don't have any lock in because if you want to take our infrastructure and move it somewhere else, we uh, have uh, we're a lot more flexible doing that. But database as a service have unique advantages as well, typically providing us more features, more uh, simplicity to set it up, as well as a very powerful tool which simplify management and make it less cost efficient to maintain that. Now, on this conference, we have uh, four uh, companies, Amazon, Google, HP, and Rackspace, which are all providing both database as a service with MySQL and infrastructure as a service. And you can uh, uh, meet them in Expo Hall and talk to them about uh, what they're doing in the field. Now, when MySQL was, when the cloud first appeared, MySQL wasn't quite ready for that. 
because it wasn't really designed in the cloud being born uh, long before that. And we had a whole number of challenges getting MySQL in the cloud. We had to overcome a lot of challenges when it comes to automation, providing dynamic scalability and availability. And not all of those problems are being completely uh, solved at the day. But we are having a lot of uh, improvements which are happening in those days. When it comes to infrastructure, this is a general technology's advantages which lift all the boats, including MySQL. Improvements in virtualization technology with less overhead, as well as less impact between different tenants of a cloud system makes MySQL more useful. Over the last uh, year, we got a provisional IOPS and flash storage in common clouds, allowing us to run their uh, more demanding workloads in the cloud with MySQL than ever before. And there is a lot of work in improving manageability, both from infrastructure as a service as a, well as a database as a service hosting providers. When it comes to software, I think this uh, question of running MySQL in the cloud efficiently is one of the greatest focuses of innovation of MySQL ecosystem. There are a lot of companies, including a lot of companies present here on the conference, which are working on making MySQL in the cloud better. And I would uh, expect the substantial improvements in this space to come over uh, next uh, few years. When it comes to open source improvements, I think the uh, open stack really leads uh, innovation here. They are uh, working a lot on making MySQL more scalable and easier to use in the cloud. And they brought a number of uh, talks here. We have uh, uh, Brian Aker who will speak about MySQL uh, and the cloud computing on Thursday. We also have a number of uh, engineering talks about the Red Dwarf project as well as using Pircona server as a database as a service which will happen on this conference. Finally, let me talk about the MySQL <coughs> becoming a multi-vendor ecosystem. If you remember something like 10 years ago, if you were serious about doing something to MySQL for software, services, anything else, you would come to the uh, single company called MySQL AB, which was a great company, but that was a single company, right? Now, we have transitioned to a multi-vendor ecosystem then we have a lot of choice. We have different vendors which can provide us all kind of uh, uh, different solutions, which I think is great, both providing more choices for users as well as ensuring the stability of MySQL ecosystem as a whole. If you look at the servers, the vendors who provide the servers, we have a free uh, uh, alternatives to MySQL which uh, exist those days. And I think when we leave uh, at the, uh, all of those three al alternatives, we had a very important uh, year behind them and we have a lot to be proud of. The Oracle have just released MySQL 5.6, which is focused on performance and scalability, as well as has a lot of unique features which we've been waiting for uh, for many years, which is uh, and Tom, uh, Thomas Ullin will talk about driving MySQL innovation today at 10.15, and he will share a lot more uh, details. At this, I also want to uh, welcome uh, Oracle and uh, say thank you for uh, joining the conference and supporting the ecosystem in other different ways. And this is the second time I'll ask you to uh, join me in giving them a round of applause for MySQL 5.6 and the yeah. end. MariaDB has also substantial changes. The MariaDB Foundation was, uh, uh, was created to drive and ensure long-term future for this MySQL. MariaDB has been also getting a lot of traction with Linux distributions, including uh, being shipped as a default server variant with a uh, number of them. There are also changes happening in what MariaDB is uh, being. When we look at the MySQL, MariaDB 5.3, it was essentially a superset of MySQL. 
right, with having some advanced features but keeping all MySQL features intact. With MySQL 5.6, there is MariaDB 10, which adds a lot of very unique and valuable features, but uh, not, it's not going to include all features of MySQL 5.6, which gives us unique positioning uh, for this project. When it comes for Percona Server, we continue focus on the uh, high value features for demanding workloads. We uh, are still able, in some cases, to outperform their uh, MySQL 5.6 with our 5.5 release. And I will be honest with you, this is the cherry picking, and MySQL 5.6 is a great release, which will be faster than our Percona Server in some higher workloads. But I think what is wonderful here is what we are working on Percona Server 5.6, which will include both improvements from Oracle, MySQL 5.6, and our improvements we've done in Percona Server. And we see that will be truly wonderful release. And another thing we've been working on, on uh, during the last year is to provide the easy upgrade, upgrade path from Percona Server to Percona XRGB cluster, providing you with increased performance uh, scalability uh, and high ability. Finally, I believe what, uh, a, what's important with our focus is what we not only provide a server, but a set of open source software which helps the MySQL developers and DBAs to be more efficient. Let me now talk briefly about the professional services landscape with MySQL. Consulting, support, training, and remote DBA. When it comes to consulting with MySQL, we have a wide set of choices. And I think it's really great to see we have both large companies, smaller companies, going back to a very uh, large set of uh, individuals. You know, uh, independent contractors are ready to provide you consulting with MySQL. When it comes to training, there is even more choices. There is a lot of uh, training which is available to you through the web free. We uh, at Percona has, have hosted a lot of uh, uh, webinars, uh, technical webinars, which is a great training program. There is also a lot of recordings available from presentations from a variety of conferences. The fact MySQL is so popular also makes a lot of uh, colleges and universities include MySQL in the program, and that can be uh, a great way to get initial uh, training with MySQL. We have also a number of uh, providers providing a professional training in, uh, with MySQL. When it comes to remote DBA, I think this is one of the markets which is, is growing very rapidly those days. One of the themes I saw la last conference and I see on this conference is it's very hard to hire MySQL DBAs. And as we have more and more companies starting to use MySQL, the remote DBA is a very valuable uh, alternative. And again, we have a great uh, options here. At Percona, we have just started with our remote DBA services this year, and we have seen the absolutely great uh, momentum of those services. The final component, I believe, is the set of uh, software which is available for MySQL. This is literally hundreds of different software packages which help us to develop a MySQL more efficiently, providing monitoring and training, high ability, manageability, and actually a whole bunch of other different areas you know, of improvement. And I think this really support of an ecosystem with a lot of software really uh, helps us to uh, be very successful with MySQL. As a summary, I want to show a cake. Right? This is the cake from uh, the, this conference in 2005, and MySQL celebrated the 10 years. I believe by 2015, this cake will grow to be a lot uh, bigger. And as you guys know, the big cake means happy dolphin, right? Well, to go back to what Terry said, we couldn't have made this conference without you, a sponsor, so guys, Give them some love. Talk to them in the expo hall. They really uh, want to see you. Or maybe even more than see you. Right? And that's, uh, that's I guess, it uh, for me. Thank you.
Thanks, Peter. Good job.